W E F U N K. We funk. But I guess we'll start the show here. We'll kick it off as the lead-off story was going to be, like I said uh, uh, on this episode three, Searching for Mojo. The lead-off was going to be, where is the mojo with the Mets? But we might have found it last night in Philadelphia after a great win over the Phils to take two out of three and uh, I guess six out of nine so far here on the season as I talked about last episode but we're playing the uh, the Phillies nine times in April very lopsided scheduling so so far six out of nine from the Phils so fuck yeah there and I guess we'll get into the whole Alvarado thing in a minute but we'll start with last night and the epic win after the uh, reversed home run call from Hoskins in the ninth and that whole situation I guess we'll start with uh, we'll start with Diaz I guess and ultimately speaking, I was okay with Rojas bringing Diaz in. Okay, of course, with the four-run lead. And as we all know, everything must be perfect for Diaz. Okay, he must have proper amount of time to warm up, and it must be a safe situation, and he had to have had turkey for lunch, or else there's no goddamn chance that Diaz is going to get anything done. But, uh, uh, so last night in a non-save situation, very dangerous to put Diaz in, as well, of course, uh, uh, with today's, or playing four versus the Cardinals, uh, uh, flying from Philly to St. Louis on a Monday with no scheduled starter. It's going to be probably be a bullpen kind of day today, so we'd have liked to maybe keep an extra arm in the bullpen. However, with the importance of last night's game after everything that went on you really wanted to slam the door so i was okay with rojas putting diaz in for the ninth diaz has to do a better job and has to get the outs but uh, uh, all in all given the situation i looked at it as a must win game going into the ninth so i was happy to have diaz coming in to slam the door shut <laughs> and and then of course steps up reese hoskins and like i said with diaz first of all uh, uh, uh you know and i was uh, joking around a little bit but with diaz we all into in 2019 very finicky everything must be right and with Diaz a lot of times as well we've learned with Diaz when it doesn't look right off the bat he doesn't necessarily right the ship along the way and uh, 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 when Diaz starts to slip he tends to slide when he slides he tends to slide off the cliff as we all remember you know the epic Diazsters of uh, you know 2019 of course in Los Angeles uh, uh, I guess the main Diazster was uh, the one at Washington with like the seven run lead in the ninth or whatever it was. And I think there was a Philly blow and save. I think at City Field, but didn't Frazier had a big homer and then Diaz blew one? Or maybe it was like a non save, again, a non save situation where he gave up a, a winning a, a home run in a tie game or something. But Diaz, we've been down this road before with Diaz. And just ultimately speaking, when it's not going well for Diaz, things get very, very shaky. And was the story yesterday as, uh, uh, you know, he was starting to struggle. Up comes Hoskins and goes opposite field for the what was thought to be the game tying home run off the you know right off the bat I thought it was a home run when it hit the seat I thought it was a home run when they showed the replay I thought it was a home run. It was not until they showed the replay and also freezed framed the ball that I could barely see which one was which between. But uh, ultimately speaking, they did get the call right as it was like a crazy bounce, a defying, a defying physics, uh, uh, you know, traveling 400 feet, then ping, uh, you know, flying the opposite direction off of the top of the fence link. But ultimately speaking, uh, they got the call right. Diaz definitely took himself out as they were as they were you know as the play was under review uh, of to, uh, of course Diaz left the game with tightness uh, not in his back tightness in his heart because there was you know runners all over the bag and he almost and he just gave up a home run and he knew there was no chance he was going to now recover and get an out so Diaz uh, I, I, I think Diaz took himself out ultimately speaking they bring in Familia and really really happy for Familia getting his first save in, in over in, in three years or I guess, you know, a little less than three years, but since July of 2018 <laughs> for Familia's last save. And Familia, it's been an up-and-down ride with Familia since the heroics of 2015. Of course, you know, he's left, he's come back, he's been in uh, problems, uh, you know, uh, unsavory, uh, you know, personal issues, uh, you know, lots of issues for uh, for Familia. But ultimately speaking, you know, uh, happy to see him come in last night with two outs in a really dramatic situation and get 
get the big out. And uh, like I said, the one out save, but the first save in three years and uh, on the all time list of Mets. So only behind Benitez and the great John Franco for all time saves leaders. Uh, and the uh, history of the Mets getting his first save in three years. And in all honesty, uh, Familia does look physically good. He's definitely, looks like he's, you know, shaved a couple pounds. And ultimately speaking, Familia looks good. We'll get into the bullpen. We'll get into the, the whole bullpen situation later. But with everything that went on with Diaz in the ninth, uh, a super. Super happy to see Familia step in and get the save and have a big moment on the season. All right, I guess other big heroes last night. Alonzo with the big hit. One of the only big hits of the season. Uh, season for the Mets, as we'll get into later on as well. But uh, uh, as well, how about Villar? Great base running, rounding third and scoring the tying run with Hoskins kind of lackadaisical on the relay play. Uh, just great heads up base running. It was a great camera angle on ESPN2. They kind of headed. Uh, uh, you know, from the third baseline perspective, so you kind of saw Villar eyeing the play in rounding third. Uh, uh, kind of reminded me of Murph heads up base running game five in Chavez Ravine in 2015. But Villar, great, great heads up base running to get the tie run. Big run, big play by Villar there. And we'll get into Villar in the lineup with the injuries in a minute as well. But uh, uh, as well, how about another hero for the game last night? But how about Peterson settling in after the early, you know, the early home run and uh, settling down, having a very nice start but uh, uh all in all i did think it was interesting uh, however actually that they never quite got the hit off of Alvarado uh, 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 with Lindor getting the big walk, kind of like Conforto on opening day, almost getting the game-winning hit by pitch uh, uh, for Lindor, walking the go-ahead run. If the Mets held on for a 5-4 win, it would have been nice. However, it would have uh, felt somewhat hollow not getting the uh, not getting an actual hit to drive in the runs in the innings. So great for Alonso to really bust it open with the uh, bases clearing double there. I was happy that Lindor walked uh, just because it meant that he didn't bat into a double play. Uh, 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 that was really, you know, with a runner on third, and, you know, less than two outs, that was a must-get-the-runner-in situation for Lindor. He did it via walk. So, uh, you know, good news there. But uh, happy that Alonzo finally got a big hit for the Mets on the season. All right. I guess uh, I will get into the whole Alvarado and, Hos uh, Alvarado and Hoskins, which will be ongoing uh, storylines for the entire season. I guess Hoskins has been an ongoing storyline for the last couple years since the since the world's longest home run trot in City Field with your boy Big LW booing like a maniac in uh, uh, by the right field foul pole in 2019 after uh, uh, in uh, what kind of st what kicked off the whole Reese Hoskins public enemy number. Number one with the Mets right now, and I guess now there's a, now there's a new number one in town as Alvarado is the uh, you know most recent public enemy number one. But I guess just in general, Alvarado's too fired up for his own good. Just in general, on the mound, he's too fired up and overthrowing. Uh, uh, his emotions are flying off the handle. You know, uh, uh, just uh, like like literally, the, he's overthrowing the ball, but he's also his emotions are flying off the handle on the mound in general. And Girardi's a total hypocrite. Because he was complaining after Harper got hit and the you know ricochet off the face and hand and that you know what could what looked like it was going to be just a brutal injury and uh, uh, amazing that Harper was back in the line back playing yesterday last night just a couple days after that but Girardi was going crazy you know saying that if you don't have control and you, and, you know you're risking pitching at somebody's head you shouldn't be in the major you got Alvarado on the team what the fuck so I mean of course Girardi is a, a totally full of shit douche but what else is is new there and uh, Alvarado. The only thing that'll keep Alvarado off the league is the suspension. Uh, 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 thankfully for Major League Baseball, as I was happy to see Alvarado get suspended because on impulse, through the whole the, the whole situation with Smith. Okay, uh, uh, I guess kind of the way that it played out in my book was, of course, uh, Alvarado gets the big strikeout on Smith after Smith was kind of jawn with him earlier when he uh, earlier in the season, a couple weeks ago, when he put one high and tight to confirm. Porto, and Smith was pointing at the head, say get under control, blah, blah, blah. Uh, the, uh, Alvarado, the big strikeout over Smith on Friday night, and then starts pointing his head and talking trash to Smith, bringing up the incident from a couple weeks ago. However, at the time, I feel that Smith was actually arguing to the umpire. So he kind of looked and turned around while Alvarado was already firmly in the middle of trash talking him, and it was more of a reaction of like, what? What's this guy? Are you talking shit to me? What? What? And then kind of took it from there. I feel 
Caleb Smith would have got would have struck out and then immediately seen Alvarado talking shit to him as he was just walking to the dugout, it would have been on popping right there. But I feel that Smith was kind of uh, preoccupied talking to the umpire and then looked over his shoulder and realized, hey, is this guy talking? Well, are you talking? What are you saying? You know, you know. And then they were, you know, they were able to get in the middle, and it never really fully, you know, just sparked off, uh, sparked out of control into a full on, you know, full on uh, a baseball brawl. But we got the twenty. We got as close as you ever do in baseball. Everybody's standing, uh, not socially distanced, however. <laughs> so I guess that's as edgy as we're getting in 2021 baseball. Is uh, the teams did not remain six feet apart <laughs> as they talked shit about the uh, about Alvarado and Smith. But uh, uh, ultimately speaking, at the time, you would have liked to see Smith w- go after him. However, given the fact that Alvarado is now on suspension and the Mets won the next two in Philadelphia with uh, Smith getting a couple of hits as well now we're standing on the uh, now we're standing on the high ground so i'm happy with the way that it all played out for now but uh, uh, like we said, you know, and, and, bit, and again, Conforto with a huge home run on Saturday. And we'll get into Conforto in a minute here. But uh, uh, that the home run on Saturday and getting the win on Saturday and then getting with the win last night really, you know, uh, uh, affect my feelings of the Alvarado thing from Friday. Because, again, now that you're looking at it, you know, after the series is over and Alvarado is now receiving a suspension for his actions and the, and the Mets won the next two. And like I mentioned, now six out of nine against the Phillies on the season. And you're feeling a whole lot better. But uh, uh, so lots of heroes abound last night. Conforto, the big uh, homer on Saturday. And we'll take we'll take two out of three from the Phils. And hopefully we will have found some mojo in the process because that's really been the big issue with the team. And I guess uh, uh, before we even get into these slumping hitters, I guess we will uh, update some injuries coming out of last night night as i mentioned turns out diaz is fine but who only knew that 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 was obvious when he left with fucking in the middle of the fire uh when he ran the hell out of there but but god bless him because honestly and remember this for next time okay literally if diaz ever walks the leadoff guy again and diaz is going to be an ongoing problem uh, and diaz is going to be an ongoing you know concern anyway but if diaz ever walks the opening the leadoff hitter can just take him out right then and there because diaz does not not overcome, you know, uh, uh, overcome issues to get big outs. However, apparently the back, the tightness in the back has now gone away after Familia gets the save. But, uh, and I guess we will get more into Diaz later, but... Uh, 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 I guess so Diaz should be fine I'd expect him not uh, you know available tonight as we immediately take action against the cards uh, but you know you'd imagine by the end of the week or throughout the week Diaz will be back and you would love to see Diaz get a big save this series uh, uh, against the Cardinals after what could have been a disaster like a, a really dodged a bullet so far on the season for Diaz Big W-E-F-U-N-K We Funk <laughs> <laughs> 